flute. What are you playing? As me, dear. Oh, go away. I will not go away. Why do you think I joined this silly band? Why do you think I learned how to play this silly thing? For only one reason, as me. Only one. For you. Oh, no. Not again. Yes, yes, yes. Again and again and again. As long as there's breath in this body. As me, I love you. Well, that's ridiculous. Why? Why is it so ridiculous? You know very well why. No, I don't. Tell me. I won't tell you. I'll show you. All right. So Esme's a little taller than I am. I admit it. But what does it matter? I mean, What's a 10 or 12 inch difference in height when two hearts beat as one? What do you mean, our two hearts beat as one? How can they beat as one when mine is way up here and yours is way down there? Okay, okay, you're taller. But height doesn't count. What counts is love. And that's what I've got for you, Esme, love. I got love I ain't even used yet. Thanks a lot, Shorty, but no thanks. Listen, Esme, you are my heart and soul. Without you, I will wander the earth, a hulk, a derelict, a, a shambling, unkempt, pathetic figure. You rang? <laughs> Maynard, you know how I feel about Esme. Tell her how I love her, how I ache and quake for her, how she puts the roses in my cheeks. By all means, Maynard, tell her, but tell her after class, won't you? Right now, if it's not too inconvenient, I would like to get on with rehearsal. <clears throat> for the past eight years, the Central High School Band has finished second in the City High School Band competition. It is not an altogether distinguished record when you consider there are only two high schools in town. <laughs> of course, if you keep playing the way you're playing today, you may finish third. <laughs> Sound your A, please. Far be it for me to enforce conformity on the new generation. But in this case, my young tin-eared friends, I am afraid there is only one A. <laughs> Zelda, show them. Thank you, Zelda. You're truly a remarkable musician. Do you hear that, Doby? A remarkable musician, a raving beauty, a giant intellect, and it's all yours. I appreciate that, Zelda. Honest, I do, but no thanks. Why not? You love me. Zelda, I love canoeing. I love tobogganing. I love popcorn with melted butter. I love blazers with brass buttons. I love green meadows and yellow daffodils. I love riding in a speedboat. I love the Constitution. But you, Zelda? No, Zelda. Sure you do. I'll prove it. So, I keep telling you, it's just a reflex. If this learned discourse could continue after rehearsal, I would appreciate it. It's not that I'm not grateful to you, Zelda. You've been an enormous help to me. <laughs> and now, Zelda, if you will man your horn, you will not find me unappreciative. All right, musicians. And I use the term loosely. <laughs> the William Tell Overture from 19, the Agitato. Oh, it was like nothing. Let us not mince words. You, Maynard, are a genius. Me? A genius. A flat-out, cotton-picking genius. In my book, Catman, the real geniuses of our time aren't those guys who are shooting rockets at Venus and Mars and like that. The real geniuses are the cats who can write jazz. Because, let's face it, what's more important than jazz? Nothing. Maynard, there's only one thing to do. You and I gotta go steady. No, just a minute. Just a darn minute. Yeah, just a darn minute. Yeah. Time's a-wasting, Maynard. Here's my merit badge. Let's go steady. Yeah, but you're a girl. So? Well, in fact, you're a very big girl. So? But I'm scared of girls, even little tiny ones. They spend my money, they won't let me kiss them goodnight, and they draw funny pictures of me in their notebooks. No thanks, girl, not me. What is this, a band rehearsal or a class in marriage counseling? In either case, the prospects are dim. However, let us press on. Back to the William Tell Overture. And Maynard, try to play the notes as written, won't you? There's a good fellow. But it's so square, Mr. Pumphrey. I mean, it's like square. Then play it like square. You don't like big jazz, that's what you don't. Maynard, 
Would it interest you to know that I have the largest collection of the Kingston Trio, Fats Domino, and the Coasters in the entire city? Hey, how come a hip guy like you got on this teaching kick? Because I am hip, Maynard. I got a bulletin for you. It takes a hip guy to be a teacher. I don't dig. If you're so hip, how come you want us to play this Ricky Ticky Lone Ranger jazz? Because the Ricky Ticky school board says I have to. <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Maynard and the rest of you, let's have a contest. Anyone in this band who writes an original jazz composition will win a handsome prize, which I will personally donate. Like money, sir? On my salary? Surely you jest. <laughs> no, the prize will not be money, but something even better. The winner will be excused from writing the next English theme. You couldn't make it like the next two. Very well, Maynard. Like the next two. Three? Like the next two. And now, if we may return to the William Tell Overture. I'm sure this will distress you no end, but, um, class, this, miss! Maynard, my offer still stands. Let's go steady. Girl, my answer still stands like no, like negative, like on, like never, like goodbye. <laughs> you see, Esme, you see, with Maynard, you're dead. With me, on you, the other hand... You, on the other hand, are too short for me. Oh, I'm just as tall as Maynard. But he can ride jazz. This makes him tall? This makes him a man among men. A leader, a child of destiny, a genius. You give me a man who can ride jazz, and I don't care if I have to lift him up the drink out of a drinking fountain. I am his. But I love you. Farewell, little one. Doby, you're not too short for me. So, all right, go ahead. Beat your head against the wall. It's your own decision. I don't have one thing to say about it. But remember, Doby, I'll always be waiting. Boy, if you've got a problem, tell me about it. Well, there is one thing bugging me. Well, ask your father, dear. That's what fathers are for. Sure, the worst he can get is a wrong answer. Well, all right. Dad, why are girls getting so tall? Oh, well, because the, uh, why are girls getting so tall? Yeah, yeah, everywhere you go, you see girls towering over all the guys around them. Uh, take, for instance, this girl, uh, Esme Louderback on the Central High Band. She's got to be at least six, two, or three. Why? Doby, dear, your father wants to help you, but you really can't expect him to know the answer to a question like that. Oh, is that so? Well, I will have you know, my dear Mrs. Herbert T. Gillis, that I do know the answer. You do? You do? Simplest thing in the world. It's the matriarchy. The oh, no, not again. Listen, I was just reading about it in the Legion magazine last week. Now, a matriarchy is a society that is ruled by women. Like ours. Precisely. Now, just a minute. Just a darn minute. Mom, please, Dad's trying to explain something. Boy, we are living in a matriarchy. Ridiculous. But it wasn't always a matriarchy. This used to be a man's country, and men ran the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, and what did women do? Well, they baked bread, washed clothes, had babies, took care of their husbands. They didn't drink or vote or make loud noises. They were sweet and shy and soft. Yeah, and short? Of course they were short. To look up to their men, they had to be short. <laughs> that must have been wonderful. Oh, it was, boy. It was. Well, what loused it up? Well, a series of catastrophes, starting with automatic washers, automatic dryers, and power steering. Now, it used to be that when a man came home from work, no matter how tired he was, he could be sure that his wife would be even tireder. But today, the poor guy drags himself into the house to find his wife looking like she just came off a month's vacation in the country. Her eyes are bright, her step is springy, her nostrils are flaring, and she's <laughs> chock full of pep and plans for him. Darling, she says to him, don't you think we ought to turn the attic uh, into a rumpus room? Don't you think we ought to uh, send little Waldo to school in Switzerland? Don't you think we ought to flood the den and make an aquarium? <laughs> oh, the poor guy. All he wants to do is crawl into an easy chair and turn on the television. But no, there she is, all over him like a swarm of hornets. He's too tired to fight, so what does he do? He just sits there and mumbles, Yes, dear, of course, dear. Whenever you say, dear, Dobie, when you give a woman power like this, it's a cinch she's going to attain the size to match it. <laughs> that, son of mine, is why girls are getting so tall. Gee, isn't there anything we can do about it? <laughs> Nothing legal. That will be enough of this.
that, Herbert T. Gillis. Toby, dear, don't you pay any attention to your father's feet are hurting him again, and you know how he gets. It's all a matter of biology. Girls get their growth earlier, and boys always catch up. You mean there's a chance I'll catch up with Esme Louderback? Of course there is. You sure? Just trust your mother who loves you. And ignore your dumb old dad who supports you. <laughs> Don't you have homework, dear? Hmm? Oh, yeah. There's cookies and milk in your room. Oh, thanks, Mom. I just don't understand you. Filling that poor boy's head with all that nonsense, you know as well as I do, he'll never grow up to be as tall as that girl. Maybe he will and maybe he won't. The point is, in a few weeks, he'll forget about her and get himself a new girl. So why not give him a little hope to cling to? Why let him go around moping? Well, maybe you're right. Of course I am. And speaking of filling the boy's head full of nonsense, what's all this gibberish about gibberish? the patriarchy? Yes, gibberish. Take our home, for example. Is there any question here who's boss? Certainly not. There you are. It's you. <laughs>
And who do you think gave it to me? Who do you think gave it to me? Toby, this is the crummiest thing I ever did in my whole life. What makes it even crummier is I'm doing it to you, the best buddy I got in the whole world, who taught me everything I know, like tying my shoes and dialing the telephone and all like that. What are you trying to tell me, Maynard? Maynard, will you tell him or shall I? Oh, I'll tell him, tall girl. It's like my duty. It certainly is. Toby! You tell him, isn't he? <laughs> Maynard, you tell me. What happened? Doby can stop trying to grow. Why? Because I ain't going to give Esme back to you, no matter how tall you get. Doby, I'm going to keep her. And I'm going to keep him. <laughs> what? Yeah, all of a sudden I dig girls. Anyhow, I dig Esme. I mean, she's real far out, this tall, crazy chick. And I like love her, Doby, and I ain't never going to give her back. Amen. Oh, no. Tough, pal, but that's where the cookie crumbles. You can hit me with all your might in the stomach if you want to, Dobe. <laughs> Come on, Dobe, hit me. I feel a lot better. You really would, Doby. No, I don't want to hit you, Maynard. You want to hit me, Doby? No. <laughs> you want me to hit her? You want her to hit me? I don't want anybody to hit anybody. Now, just go, please. Both of you, go. Leave me alone. I love you, Doby. Oh, please leave me alone, Zelda. My life is in ashes. Let me finish. I love you, Doby. I love you so much, I can't stand to see you suffer. So that's why I'm going to get you the one thing in the world that'll make you happy. You mean... Esme Lauterbach. Yeah? How? Listen. What does Esme admire and respect more than anything in the whole world? A man who can write jazz music. Right. So next week, when Mr. Pomfret has his contest to see who can write the best jazz composition, you are going to stand up and play the guitar and sing a great jazz number. Exactly. A number that you wrote yourself. And you'll win first prize in a breeze. And Esme will be your girl, even if she is a whole head taller. Zelda, have you blown your stack? Me play a guitar? Me write a song? I've already written the song. And it's really a gas if I do say so myself. As for the guitar, I can teach enough chords to fake it. Why are you doing this, Zelda? You want that great big giraffe of a girl, don't you? Yeah. That's why I'm doing it. But now hear me good. This is the plan. No, 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 no. Now, can't you get it through your pointed little head that Tempest is fugiting? There's only two more days. No, it's no use, Zelda. I'll never learn in time. Of course you will. You love Esme, don't you? Sure I do. Well, love can move mountains. You're right, Zelda. Bring on those mountains. Attaboy. Yeah. Now, cord. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, excellent, marvelous. Now, let's do it one more time and get it right. Ready? One, two. Zelda, I owe you an apology. Zelda, I was suspicious when you first started teaching me to play the guitar. In fact, I still am. But I want you to know that if I take first prize tomorrow and win Esme, I'll never forget you. There'll always be a warm spot in my heart for you and a, a place at my table. Zelda, you're a real human being. Now, come on, we, we haven't got much time left. You ready? Uh-huh, yeah. One, two, three. struck me in the heart when I first met you. Oh, Maynard, I just know you're going to win the contest. I mean, the song you wrote is the living, breathing, ultimate end. Uh-huh. And you know what you're going to do after you take first prize? Uh-uh. You're going to stand on a chair and kiss me. <laughs> hey, Dove. Hey, Dove. Dove. Hey, Dove. Hey. Hey, man. <laughs> he, like, hates me. But I don't, Catman. I love you, and you love me. And love is all that matters, isn't it? Tall girl, you know what I don't like, like? What? I don't like, like, love. <laughs> Just stay loose, pal. You got nothing to worry about. You'll take first prize on a breeze. Oh, maybe. But if I do, it'll be on account of that song you wrote. That's the most beautiful song I ever heard in my whole life. Oh, pish -posh. Just remember, Doby, give it everything you've got. You're a cinch. Esme will fall into your lap like a ripe plum. A great big one. <laughs> Let me put it to you simply. You're a great human being. Good morning, troubadours. Today, as we all know, is the contest for the best original jazz composition. Now, will the contestants please raise their hands? Oh, yes, Maynard, of course. Anyone else? Doby, you have written an original jazz composition? Well, yes, sir, he has. I... Well, I suppose the merciful thing is to get it over with as quickly as possible. All right, Doby, you go first. Excuse me. <laughs> Kill him, Poopsie. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I never was good at football. I never took time to try. Fishing and hunting just ain't my dish. I let it pass right on by. But give me a cutie and I know my duty. You'll find me right beside her. But don't get rough. I don't like that stuff. I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I never did learn to wrestle, no. and boxing leaves me cold. With a mind that's willing, but a back that's weak, I can't be brave and bold. But give me a girly with a smile so pearly, and the old moon is shining brighter. Yes. And I'll show you what this boy can do. I'm a lover, uh -huh. not a fighter. <laughs> I never did like adventure, no. don't want to fly to the moon. the moon, the only trip I ever want to take will be on my honeymoon, when I find me a lassie with a cute little chassis, I'll step up and invite her, yeah. but I won't be mean when I find my queen, I'm a lover, uh -huh. not a fighter, <laughs> yeah, give me a cutie and I know my duty, you'll find me right beside her, but don't get I don't like that stuff, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> from the contest, Mr. Pomfret. Withdraw? Yeah. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Bong! Oh, yeah, you gotta give him the prize. And he wins Esme, too. He won her fair and square. Now, just a minute. Just a darn minute. Move, girl. You wanted a genius, didn't you? Well, here's the pin. Go grab him. You're right. Small man, I've reconsidered. What's an eight or ten inch difference in height when a fellow's got a talent like yours? All right, I'll go steady. Here's my merit badge. Miss, could you possibly plight your troth a little later? This, in spite of all appearances, is still a classroom. We'll work out later. Well, Doby, would appear that you had won the prize, and I'm completely astonished by it. Congratulations. No, sir. I beg your pardon? No, sir. No, sir, I can't accept the prize. The prize belongs to Zelda Gilroy. Oh, Doby. Zelda, would you do me the privilege to go steady with me? Oh, ye... No, Doby. I'm not worthy of you. I've been a rat, a low-down conniving rat. I let you think that I was honorable and self-sacrificing because I knew all along that you were going to do what you just did. I knew it because... because it is you, Doby, who are noble and self-sacrificing, and I am rotten clean through. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Pomfret, would you mind if Zelda and I stepped outside for a moment? I would be abjectly grateful. Come, Zelda. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> well, Zelda, I've got to give you this. It was pretty smart, that plan you figured out. It was treacherous and deceitful. True, but smart. I mean, you were using your head, which is what I should have been doing. I don't follow you. Look, what if I did start going steady with Esme? Sooner or later, she's got to find out I can't really write jazz music. Then what does she do? She dumps you? Exactly. She dumps me, just like every girl I've ever had has dumped me. Not me, Doby. That's right. Not you. You're the only girl in the whole Central High that I can be sure of. You mean you want to go steady with me? Well, Zelda, it's not a question of want. It's a question of what's available. And you, I'm afraid, are it. Oh, Doby! <laughs> but give me a girl with a smile so pearly and the old moon is shining brighter. And I'll show you what this boy can do. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I never did like adventure. Don't know. <laughs> the only trip I ever want to take will be on my own. Yeah.
gal was dreamy dobby once a gal was creamy dobby once a gal to call his own is she blonde is she tall is she dark is she small is she any kind of dream or at all no matter she's hers and hers alone cause dobby has to have a girl to call his Dobby, 